Good morning, beloved. It is a blessing and a joy for me to join you today from the sanctuary to once again lead worship, even though it is virtual, for us to be able to rise from our places of rest in the morning time or whenever it is that we're viewing this worship service, it is good to be in the land of the living. It is good to have the blood running warm in our veins. God has blessed us with something to eat, and if God has gotten you up this morning and made it possible for you to still be breathing, for provided you with some food to eat and some water to drink and some family around you, maybe giving you a portion of health and some income, and even if things aren't going your way today, it is a good thing to be able to say hallelujah God. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for what you have done for me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good and God's mercy endures forever.
Bahem. Blessings, beloved. It has been good to be with you this past week, and we look forward to opportunities that will be ours to gather yet again in this upcoming week. And we hope that you'll be with us as we take opportunities to pray on Tuesday, 6 a.m., and on Thursdays at 6 p.m. And I hope that you'll join us in one of these opportunities that we are using to intercede for those of us in our community who need God's help. And if you are breathing, you need God's help today, tomorrow, and the next. So we're hoping that you will come and join us in those times that we have scheduled together. And we're hoping that you will come with us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we begin our second Advent study, our second Advent Bible study as we move into this season expecting joy, expecting hope, expecting love, expecting peace, and looking for Jesus all the while. We hope that you'll come and join us as we get into another uh, study that will encourage you and enlighten you prayerfully and make it possible for you to get through this season successfully joyously, expectantly, and in a way that provides something that will change your life. Beloved, we're so thankful that you have been faithful. We're thanking God for the goodness that God has shown you and that which you have provided to us. We're looking forward to still receiving from you what the ministry needs to continue, and we're looking forward to receiving that. You have two different ways of giving, either through the mail to us, Bethlehem Baptist Church, 587 Reverend Tony E. Jackson, Senior Way, Newark, New Jersey, 07107, or via the Givelify app, or perhaps you see the donate button on our website, or even the link on Facebook, or in the chat on Zoom. Whichever way you choose to give. We're looking forward to receiving your tithes and your offerings that there might be meat in God's house and that God will pour out a blessing over you that you don't have room enough to receive. We're also looking forward to you being able to make your anniversary offering, your, your cheerful and faithful gift for the ministry in celebration for God keeping us for 110 years. Now in our 111th year, won't you be faithful? And we're also looking for you to support the ministry as we reach out to help hungry people. And in this way, we're not just going to do this for the holiday. We're going to want to continue in, uh, into the new year looking out to be a blessing for somebody who hasn't had enough to eat. We are in a zip code and in a region of the state of New Jersey where people are experiencing food insecurity. They cannot get enough nutrition and we want to assist some of them in this effort to live and to live with dignity. Everybody has a right to live. We want to support them in the way that God leads us to do. And I hope that you will join us and that you will make sure to be faithful and to give cheerfully and generously as God has prospered you. Good morning, Bethlehem. First John 4, 19 says, We love him because he first loved us which allows us to love one another, amen? So worship the Lord with me. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. How I love you. How I love you. How I lift. How I lift. High my voice. High my voice. With your with praise. Your praise. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I implore thee. I my heart, Trench my heart as my lips, as my lips part, part your, grace. your grace. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Lord, to love you. Lord, to love you. I have been changed. I have been changed to bless your name. Bless your name. I am constrained. I am constrained by this great gospel. Jesus, Precious Jesus, now I love you. Now I love you. How I lift, how I lift, high my voice, high my voice with your with praise. Your praise. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, I implore thee, I implore thee, drench 
my heart. Drench my heart as my lips. As my lips part your grace. Part your grace. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Lord, to love you. Lord, to love you. I have been changed. I have been changed. To bless your name. To bless your name. I am constrained. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. How I lift. How I lift. High my high voice. High my voice with, with your, your praise. praise. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I implore thee. I implore thee. Drench my heart. Drench my heart. As my as lips. As my lips. Part your grace. Your Persuaded. I am persuaded, Lord, to love Lord, you. Lord, to love you. I have been changed. I have been changed to bless, to bless your mighty your name. name. Hallelujah. I am constrained. I am constrained by this great gospel. By this great gospel forever, forever to worship Thee. To worship thee. Sing that chorus one more time. I'm persuaded. I am persuaded. Lord, to love you. Lord, to love you. I have been changed. I have been changed. To bless your name. Bless your name. For I am constrained. I am constrained. By this great by gospel. By this great gospel. Forever. Forever. To worship thee. to worship oh. thee. Friends, won't you join me in assuming a posture of prayer? God, we come today looking and seeking for a word. We come today looking for you to encourage us. We come today needing you now. Help us, Lord, in this time. Help us to hear from you. Lord, slide this preacher to the side and speak to your people. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A word today from the Gospel of Mark, beginning at the first chapter and the first verse in the New Revised Standard Version, we find these words. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be unto God. For a moment today, I just want to speak from the topic and on the thought that help is on the way. Help is on the way. The Gospel of Mark perhaps written to a mostly Gentile audience, but one that could be somewhat mixed, cosmopolitan of people of various traditions uh, who are known to come from various places are, are hearing Mark initially and later perhaps reading Mark. Mark, Mark we, we, we understand, is likely the oldest of the Gospels, the one that calls itself the good news of Jesus Christ, there being the gospel, one that connects us to not only Jesus, but also to the prophetic traditions, calling upon in its first few verses, Isaiah, and listening to the prophet as Deutero Isaiah is calling out the prophecy of the restoration of Israel calling out that things are going to be better. The trouble that you've seen is going to be eclipsed by the goodness that is coming. God has not forgotten you people, and God is going to do something different now. He's going to operate in restoration. Calling out and recalling for us the, this, 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 uh, uh, this way of being and this understanding, Mark does a few things more. It also talks to us about some things that we ought to be expecting. Uh, not just that things are going to change, but there is someone who is crying out and pointing toward the change that is coming. Mark offers us hope. We talked last week about hope. Mark offers us hope that the future is going to be better than the past. Here we are living in this time and we're not necessarily so different coming from various places and various traditions, but also living in a world where we've seen some trouble. The people who heard Mark for the first time lived under the oppression of the Roman state who, who probably didn't get all of the resources they were supposed to have, who, who saw that there were, guarantee, there were great inequalities in the society and perhaps even knew that there, was, there were problems emanating from the top, living under an imperial power who looked to colonize, who looked to take over, who looked to subjugate peoples who looked to make money off of the backs of the lower classes in the various lands that they took. Here we, here we are in this time, perhaps knowing uh, on the other side of what colonization is all about, uh, uh, perhaps having some thoughts as marginalized people, what it is to live under oppressive regimes, what it is to know that there's trouble in the land. And today, as we sit here on the second Sunday of Advent in 2020, it must be said that there is trouble in the land. It must be said that things are not like we would have them to be. It must be said that we have a problem, Houston. And as we look toward the end of this season, as we look toward Christmas, as we look toward a new year, as we look toward the future. Can we have joy? Can we know joy? The good thing is that, that, that Mark is telling us that we ought to be joyful for there is help on the way. We live in a time where we are, are, are faced with different issues and faced with different problems and perhaps, as Dr. Ashley shared with us a few weeks ago, we are living under triple pandemics. There are at least three, maybe more, but at least three. We are still uh, uh, reckoning with the, the, the coronavirus global pandemic. We are still reckoning reckoning and dealing with and living with a disease that has change our very lives, has changed how it is you wake up in the morning and get your coffee and put your clothes on and whether or not you leave your house. 
what your children are doing during the day, how they are doing it, whether or not you can leave and do certain things and go certain places. I'm preaching in front of an empty church right now. And yet it is filled with the Spirit, and I'm thankful for the Spirit being here, but I am saying that everything is different as a result of this, and we are still learning how to reckon with this pandemic. We are still dealing with more than a few hundred years of oppression. We've known oppression in this land through, through racial means, through, through, through gender as a marker, through sexuality as a marker, through class as a marker. We have seen oppression and marginalization and plundering of communities. And we're learning how to, 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 to reckon with what it means to dismantle this system, this, this ability for us to live in this way. Yet, it affects your daily life. It affects so many people. Folks can't own a home like some others because of what they look like. Sometimes they won't get as much money when they sell their home. Sometimes they won't be able to get a loan to purchase a home. Maybe they won't be able to accumulate wealth like some others. Maybe they won't get the same health care when they go to the hospital. Maybe their children won't have the same quality equipment and books and resources in their schools. Maybe, well, we've seen this, maybe they won't get the same level of health care in the hospital or they may not get the same level of protective equipment and they die at greater numbers based upon where they fall on these spectrums with race and class and gender and sexuality. Maybe they don't have a shelter under which to live and cannot eat on a regular basis and we're learning what it means to reckon with dismantling this system or these systems in this pandemic of oppression that we've lived under. And we're dealing with a pandemic of extreme uh, partisanship, some say hyper-partisanship and extreme disunity. In this nation, we are believing some strange things and, and some of us are, are finding ways to be separate from another. Some of us are finding ways to be encouraged by the wall building on the southern border and we want to build walls. We want to continue to build walls around zip codes and continue to build walls around institutions and continue to build walls pre preventing people from living with dignity and everybody's got a right to live with dignity. And here we are right now in this situation seeing how grim the prospects are, how grim the environment is, how terrible the circumstances are. We are dealing with a situation here. We have some problems. We can connect with these ancient people in this way, but take solace because help is on the way. And in this Advent season right now, right here, right where you sit in this moment, even though we're telling stories that we've told for a couple thousand years, and even though we're talking about a Jesus that has come once, has lived, has loved, has taught, has been crucified, has died, and has been resurrected, we are still looking forward each year to the coming of the Christ child and hoping that things will be better. But I not only hope, we have joy knowing that it is coming, knowing that there is hope on the way, knowing that a voice cries out from the wilderness, knowing that the one who's coming is greater than the one who proclaims it's coming, knowing that God loves us, that God sent Jesus into the world, and that Jesus lived, loved, taught, bled, died, and rose again for you and for me. And that ought to help us right now. That ought to lift you up right now. That ought to give you some hope right now. That ought to offer you something to live forward and love forward and look forward to. This, this, in this moment, here we know that help is on the way. What is Mark telling us? Mark tells us a few things. I want to call them to your attention and I want to move out your way. 
Mark connects us with the prophetic tradition. Mark connects us with the prophetic tradition and, call, and, and, and through the text, Mark is telling us through the words of Isaiah and through the words of Malachi that somebody is coming to help us and that this is going to not only offer us restoration, but there is going to be a transformation that is available after the destruction, after the problem, after the darkness, after the grimness, after the trouble that we're in, that there is help coming on the way. And here, 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 uh, um, uh, Mark is recalling for us that there is a way to be, there is an ethic to live by, there is a, a one who is providing this, and it is going to allow for the social situation to be changed. Oh, we're not just talking about what's happening at the end of the age or beyond the end of the age or in the next plane of existence. Mark is helping us to see that things that can be better right here, right now. Things can be better, and if we had looked at how things have gone from now until this time in the past, if we looked at how things have been through all of these periods, things have gotten better. It may not be like we want to, even the people are talking in Isaiah about how it is not exactly what they wanted it to be, how the, 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 it is better, but it isn't all the things haven't happened yet. We haven't felt all the feelings. We haven't seen all the resolutions. All the problems haven't gone away, but it is getting better. And yet again, as we sit right here, on this second Sunday in December, 2020, we can know that help is on the way. One is coming and it is going to be a situation where he brings a better social understanding. It can be better right here and right now. We can do better right here and right now. We can act better right here and right now, we can do as God wants us to do right here and right now. And Jesus brings a focus on how to live that way. Not only, not only does Mark connect us to this prophetic tradition, Mark tells us that there is forgiveness. Mark tells us that, that John is coming and, and getting people to, to see where they have gone wrong, to repent of their problems and to be forgiven of their sins. Let me tell you, it was sin that caused the problem for Israel. It was sin that caused the destruction that they had, that they received, that they saw, that they knew. It was separation from God because of the wrong that they were taking, the social sin, the spiritual sin, all of the other sins, the sin of racism, the, the sin of sexism, the, the sin of classism, the sin of xenophobia, the sin of, of partisanship and disunity, the sin of not paying attention to a virus that can kill. These are things that we are still seeing and just like the prophets of old, the prophets had told the people then and they're telling the people now that sin is your problem even in the social realms, not only in the spiritual realms because God is not pleased with how this is going. Get right. Get right. Get right. Get right. John is coming and telling us that there is forgiveness. That you can be forgiven for the sin that you have, that you have caused. That there is an opportunity for you to, 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 to transform, to, to move into repentance. When Jesus does come, as John says, we will. When Jesus does come, he keeps talking in Mark about the kingdom, this, this, this understanding of how God does things, uh, not just how God does things, but God's reign. We like to say kingdom, but God's reign. God's reign, R-E-I-G-N. God's reign means what it is that God has told you to do, how it is that God has told you to be, how it is that God has told you to act. And Jesus brings forth this love ethic and tells us, yes, you can be forgiven. Yes, you can be forgiven the repentance. If you would know it, you can be forgiven of your sin. Let me tell you how to be. Let me tell you how to act. Anything 
anything of, apart from that is wrong. Seek forgiveness. And guess what? Your healing comes through your, after your seeking. Your restoration comes after your seeking. Your, your healing comes after the seeking in the social realms and also in the spiritual. Here, Mark is telling us that help is on the way, that there is yet repentance, that there is yet forgiveness, and you need to know it now. Here, on the second Sunday in the year 2020 of the month of December, here in Advent, help is on the way because forgiveness is still real. Be joyful. Be joyful. Here, here, Mark is telling us something else. Not only that there is a connection to the prophetic tradition and that we can look back at what the prophets of old have said, in this case Isaiah, that there is a restoration coming. And not only does he say that there is a restoration coming because there is forgiveness available to you and that you can be free of the sin that you have uh, undertaken, that you have taken on, but also Mark is telling us and helping us to recall an experience that we take for us, that we take so seriously. As, as African Americans, we take this seriously because of the slavery that we lived under in the southern states in the, ninth, in the 17th and the 18th uh, and the 19th centuries. We, we love the Exodus tradition. Uh, my Jewish friends uh, uh, who, who recall this every year by command look back on the Exodus and give thanks to God for helping them in the wilderness, for taking care of them in the wilderness, and for leading them out of the wilderness. And here we are, Mark, once again, by telling us that a voice is crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his pad straight by telling us that John is one who eats wilderness food, the, the locusts and the wild honey, who, who, who lives in this, who has lived in this place and has now come out of the wilderness. God in Mark is telling us that there is an end coming to your wilderness experience and here on the second Sunday of Advent, in the, in the 12th month of the year, in the year 2020, we can look back at what it is that Mark is saying and be thankful because Mark is recalling for us deliverance. Deliverance from that which we've been living under. Deliverance from that which has been uh, 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 accosting us with deliverance from those problems that we have maybe have contributed to ourselves. Maybe we, we were born in the generation that was in the wilderness, but there is a time for coming out of the wilderness, and we are so thankful. That ought to bring you joy. That ought to bring you joy. Listen, this is the end. This is the Christmas season, and everywhere you go, you'll probably hear songs of joy. See the word joy. See those letters, J-O-Y. And that's beautiful. That's wonderful. But I am joyful for a particular reason. I am joyful for one thing. I am joyful that Mark has told us that John is calling and making announcement for one who is coming that is going to change the situation. And I am joyful because I know that hell is on the way. I am looking right now toward the Christ child. I am waiting to put my hope in the direction of Bethlehem right now. Here we are waiting to see and knowing that even in the time of trouble, even in the grim situation, right here, right now, we can know joy. Joy. Joy because God has not forgotten. Joy because God has offered the way of salvation. Joy because God has provided forgiveness. Joy because God has said your trouble, I see your trouble, I know your trouble, and even in the midst of that which you might have brought on yourself in some ways, not in every way, but in some ways, I see it, and I've got a solution. I, I, I've got a plan. I, I've got a situation coming and help is on the way. Listen, it's not the Biden-Harris 
uh, uh, administration. It's not the Moderna vaccine. It's not the Pfizer uh, BioNTech vaccine. It's not the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. It's not Regeneron. It's not uh, any particular politician. It's not any particular book or or understanding. What it is is Jesus. The hope is Jesus. The joy we have, we have because of Jesus. And hey, I'm thankful that God is making a move. I'm thankful that we're seeing some things change. But be clear. I'm joyful for Jesus. I know that there may be better things for us in 2021. I'm looking forward to being able to have a church back together on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and for us to be able to fellowship and to pray and to worship together. But I am joyful because I know Jesus is. And because I know Jesus is coming and because I am looking forward to having a new and life-affirming and life-changing experience with the Christ child. In this time, in this season, on the second Sunday of the 12th month of the year, 2020, know this, know joy, because help is on the way. Pray with me now. Gracious God, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for salvation. We ask now that if one is with us that is looking to change, that is looking to recognize the Lordship of Jesus and the goodness that you provide in the good news that you love us, that you have not forgotten us, that you've forgiven us if we would only repent and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. We ask God today that you will help each and every one of us to make acknowledgement of that fact. And if one is doing it for the first time, God, that you would help them and that you would help us to help them in the ways that you would. God, cleanse us now as we prepare to remember Jesus at the table that Jesus established. We ask God you change the elements that we will have and consume and celebrate with from a common to a spiritual use and help us to be better and more like who you want us to be in the days to come. Change us now, clean us now, prepare us now. We ask, we plead in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Beloved, the doors of our church are open and we offer Christ to you in this moment. If you've never acknowledged and accepted Jesus the Christ before, here is your moment. Not simply to escape the fires, but to be loved and to live in love and to live in righteousness, to do as God would have you to do. Here is your time. Here is your chance. Here is your opportunity. If we can pray for you, if we can help you along the way, I want you to reach out to us through telephone or on social media or via email, I want you to reach out to us and let us know how we can be participant in your faith journey, how we can help you to proclaim, like John proclaimed, that help is on the way. This is our job. This is our task. I hope that we can join together. God bless you.
We give thanks today for this opportunity to once again come to this table. We're joyful today recalling a night long ago, but we're joyful as we consider what Jesus offers us today. The help that we have in this moment and the expectancy with which we can look into each and every day. Here, we are still invited to come and enjoy this feast that Jesus has prepared, recalling today the love that Jesus had for us, recalling today the joyfulness of the fellowship with which we are blessed. Let us pray. God, we are thankful for yet another opportunity to gather on this last first Sunday of 2020. We ask God that you would help us as we consume these elements to consider that which Jesus has done for us and yet what we are called to do in the world and also what it will mean for us to join together once again. We ask God that you would change these elements from a common to a spiritual use that we may not end our time together the same way we entered into it. Help us to focus in on the Christ. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Beloved, the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, this represents my body which is broken and given to you. As often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. And I ministering in the name of Lord, of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, say take and eat and be thankful in your hearts. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And I, ministering in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, say, take and drink and be thankful in your hearts. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. God bless you. Beloved, it has been a wonderful thing for us to be gathered together in worship today. Thank you, God, for the opportunity and the experience that we have had. We want to invite you to join us this week as we gather. We hope that you'll come and uh, be with us so that we can go to God together. But until we have the opportunity to meet one more time, I want you to receive this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and evermore. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Friends, 2020 has been some kind of year. We have not been able to do all of the things that we had planned on our calendar. However, we want to make sure that in the month of December, we hold a church meeting. Therefore, on Sunday, December 13th, immediately after the morning worship service, we'll gather together and meet as a church body. Every member who is able is welcome to attend. God bless you.